questions that they had about the WordPress, oh sorry, uh, the membership plugin, what was the question? I'm trying to build an e-commerce type site where somebody can register on the website. I also have a mailing list with like a mailing list software and let's say PayPal for my, so I just wanted recommendations on how that can all link together. Okay, I'm gonna be a little more generic if that's okay, yeah. on, on more plugin related, uh, plug on the plugin side of things. And, we're, and at, when I'm done, we're gonna tell, uh, talk about development sites on, do most of you guys access the websites for development on a cPanel? Or how do you guys install WordPress from scratch? cPanel, cPanel, yeah. that way? <laughs> I'm gonna get that way. Cool, so the, the cPanel you can do, well, Kevin is gonna show you how to do that when I'm done here. Is that not online? Oh. So uh, a few months ago we did a beginner's presentation about kind of the A to Z. I just installed WordPress. What to do? Was anybody there? That was your first meetup? Very cool. Very cool. So we, and one of the parts I talked about was how do you look for plugins and how do you find a good plugin and a few things like that, which I was going to show you a little bit again, but um, there we go. If you... I know he, like, he presented a, 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 a website with his plugin on it. In general, I would not recommend going to a non-wordpress.org place I know, to download if it's the first time you guys are looking for plugins. Like if you know developers and you know the community and you kind of know names or how people are involved in the community, then I would say great, go to different people's websites. Initially, I think you always should use wordpress.org, the plugin repository. Now. When you install WordPress, a database gets created. Does everybody, under, does that make sense? That database has, a, has a, for this question about membership, plugins, e-commerce, and uh, newsletters, <laughs> one of the tables inside that plugin is called WP Users. And the, the, what WP Users is where you create a username and password, and that's where all our information goes for all our username and passwords of every person that ever gets created, uh, that, that ever registers for your website. The reason I'm mentioning that is because if you're looking for plugins that want to, you want to sync them, if you want the same person to have the same username for plugin for newsletter and everything, you want to make sure that WP users sync on all those plugins. Does that make sense? So far, so good. Um, so, what, what's more important, membership? Yeah. Okay. So, you just go to WordPress here and you just do a search for membership. Um, I mean, uh, once, hang on. You can get a quick uh, snippet. Of, it gives you the information. It tells you when it was updated, which I think is important. If anything is over a year old, I don't use it for the most part. Um, see how many downloads it has and see how many, uh, what the ratings are. Um, this one in particular, actually, I've, I've started loving more and more. <laughs> this plugin for membership purposes. Um, the other thing I look at when I download things from people is I always look if they have other plugins or not. If they have more, if they have a lot of plugins and they only have like 100 downloads, but they're an active developer in the, in the community, I'd likely use their plugin because that means they're, they're somehow involved, actively involved in the community. Uh, I also look at, uh, on the support tab here, when the last time they responded to an email, uh, to, to a, a question in the forum. So if they're not responding quickly, you probably won't be able to get a lot of help with that plugin because they're likely not gonna respond to your question. So if you, I, I think that's what is important if, you, if you've never used it before. Um, so this plugin is a pretty good membership plugin. And it has a, <laughs> the reason I like it actually is more because of a payment gateway it has versus the way it works. But this is a good membership plugin. When somebody creates an account, their username and password gets created and they get added WP users. And then anything you do beyond that with this e-commerce or newsletter needs to just sync and read that user, uh, user file question. So that, that's a good newsletter, uh, sorry, membership one. One I used to like and I use a lot still is S2 member. I don't know if anybody has used S2 member, that's a pretty good. Uh, membership plugin is a little more developer friendly. Uh, 
so with S2 member, if I want to do some like custom, like even like custom member types, I can do four by default, and then I have to go to the config file or to do something on the on the on the uh, PHP side. So if you're not comfortable with doing that, I would recommend this one. This one you can do all from the dashboard. Um, it also has this payment gateway, which I'm in love with, called Stripe.com. So I don't have to use PayPal or Google Checkout. I can use the Stripe.com. They stay on my website. The fees are exactly the same. I don't have to go off-site and come back uh, to get payment. Um, so that's the two main reasons I like that one. He was actually, he presented at the WordCamp too, didn't he? Anybody? He presented at WordCamp last month. Newsletter. Newsletter's been a tough one. For years, I used this one called MailPress. Anybody ever use MailPress? No, just me. <laughs> so MailPress is awesome because it syncs with uh, your user base. The issue is that it's like very complicated to make any theme or like newsletter fancy theme if you wanted to like a pretty newsletter to go out. Oh, and the thing I was looking for is I wanted. Whenever I publish a new post, I want an automatic email to go out. I, I didn't want to use uh, FeedBurner for my own personal. I won't get into. <laughs> I don't want my data at Google. There you go. I want less data at Google. Um, so MailPress let, let, would let me create a newsletter template, and, I, and anytime I publish a uh, post in my blog, anybody that subscribed would automatically get an email update with that newsletter. If I posted three that day, three of them would go out. In the last couple of months, this one has come out, which is pretty good. And by the way, I always look at screenshots. But they, it's, it's, it's almost like a MailChimp on your dashboard. Um, they have preset themes you can choose from. It has these options over here where you can drag and drop to create your newsletter, right? So you can drag and drop posts or drag and drop uh, social bookmarks or content, and then you can manage your subscribers and everything from the, in one place. So, And there's a few different ways you can mail. Um, if you're using your uh, shared host for newsletter stuff, there's limitations on how many emails you can send out per hour. So you have to ask your host. Um, the majority of them range between 250 to 500 per hour. Once you get a VPS, which is a virtual private server or some kind of cloud, uh, support, then that you can have higher numbers, um, or you can hi pay for an SMTP service uh, to be able to send out your emails. Does that make sense? This one I'm using a lot more. This one has a thing now that in the last month where you can actually do the, the things to where you can have a, anytime somebody publish you publish a post on your blog, it automatically sends out an email with whatever design you create using this theme the theme creator they have for newsletters. Um, and it imports, no matter what newsletter plugin you used before, you, it imports almost all the users over automatically. So if you have a different plugin you're already using, it'll import them into this new one. Newsletter. So that was membership and newsletter, right? What was the third one? E-commerce. <laughs> E-commerce e is tough. E Does anybody have a favorite e-commerce one that they use? Woo, and people like, I've not actually used Woo, so I don't know. This one I know is very popular, people are using it a lot. Um, I, I use this one a lot, I use MarketPress a lot. It also has a Stripe.com uh, payment gateway, which is one of my important parts. But MarketPress, I use that one a lot. I, I, I've heard great things about that one too, So, but I personally don't have any experience with it. Um, what was the one you said that you do use? This one, MarketPress. Market. The thing with this one is there's a free there's a free version and then you have to pay for the uh, paid version. I think WooCommerce is the same though, right? Does Woo uh, yeah, I believe so, yeah. You have to you get free part and then there's a premium version. Um, yeah, I know. But yeah, so this one and this is where you can just create. Uh, yeah, say so it connects to PayPal or an authorized checkout, whatever money bookers. Um, and then WPMU, I mean, there's there's good things, bad things about that company, but uh, they, they're going to update their information, have their plugins up to date all the time. So you can kind of, anytime WordPress updates, they'll be updating as well. Um, and it just gives you like the payment, you know, where you can create a shopping cart and stuff. So I guess those are the three I've used the most recently. 
I'm not saying they're the only ones, but those are the three. <laughs> that makes sense. So, is there any questions? Does that make sense? Cool. Do you, do you want to cover the backup buddy part? Okay. Uh huh. Oh, oh, I got to use this? It doesn't sound like anything. So, so, you had asked about moving your site from local host to, someone had asked about, oh, there you go, local host up to your um, web, web site. I have a website and I want to make a copy of it. Oh, and you want to move it into a subfolder. Yeah. All right. That's a little different than I was thinking because you've got it on local host when you want to move all the articles that you're going to read, you're going to talk about backing up your database, backing up your files, and then going in and changing your WP config to change lines or, you know, to actually give it the new address, because all of your addresses are local hosts. So one of the things that I've actually started playing with, thank you, is Backup Buddy. Um, this plugin actually will back up your whole site, but what it can also do is it can help move your site. Because you'll back it up, it'll give you a downloaded file, it'll give you an import file. When you go to your new site URL, which you would do under that support link, so my site slash you know, test, test site, you would then run what they call importbuddy.php. It asks you about five or seven questions, and it restores the site, and it changes the URL. It does everything for you. The only thing that I found you actually have to do is create a database first for it to live in. So that you go in, if you've got Depending on your web hosting, a lot of hosts use cPanel, like it or not, and there's a wizard in there on how to create a database. So, you know, I find that if you don't want to do it following the manual steps you'll find, the import buddy is definitely the best way to go. And I think it keeps, it keeps the widgets and everything in place. It keeps everything. Whatever layout you have set up, you don't have to, usually when you reset a site, you have to go reset the widgets and you have to go to the tab, the and it's fast. Like um, we had a project that I needed to move a production site to a dev site, and I created a new URL for it, which is just like you're talking with the subdirectory. From and it was a small site, maybe the, the site was maybe 40 meg in size. It only took about 20 minutes to move it, and it was done, and it was running. Okay, with backup button. So, so and, and now, I was going to stop that. Yeah. Yeah. No, free, is it? no. So I think I, the pricing is what? Like, how much is it for a set? I bought it years ago and unlimited. Uh, and so I don't know what it costs anymore. There you go. Personal, 75 yeah. So it does cost money. Yeah. But, um, I mean, so if you're doing it, I mean, what's good about it is that it really does back up your site. And you should be backing up every day, and I don't really believe in trusting hosts' backups. Okay? And, pardon? There's three ways to do all this. It's just hard. It's harder. And this will then, if you want to back it up, you can tell it to send this to, like, your Dropbox account. It'll let you send it to your email. It'll let you send it if you've got a big site and you're using S3 storage. They have advanced ways to store your sites. I have three. Pardon? Okay. So it really, you know, it works. Uh, that's why I like it. I think it's worth the money. It's peace of mind. Uh, backing up my site is important. There are other backups. Uh, what was the one? A lot of them just do the database. That have been popular. This one has the most right Yeah, that's the one. This is the this is the one that real people generally talk about. But this just backs up your database. This doesn't back up your content folder with your images, anything you've uploaded to your site. So, you know, if you had to reinstall, you'd install WordPress. You'd have to go back out and get all your plugins, which you could do. But this won't back up your images, any file uploads, anything. So that's why, you know, you know I'm not selling backup buddy. I don't even have an affiliate link for it. But uh, I really think it's a worthwhile plug. But how's it different from just making a copy of your folders? Uh, okay. Yeah, so the backup buddy 
Can I repeat what for the video? Repeat the question. Oh, repeat the question. The question for the video was how can you, what's the difference between backup buddy and doing it yourself? Okay. It's for ease of use because you can go in, back up your database, you can zip up your entire file structure, copy your files up to the web server, restore the database, then there's a codex article called Moving WordPress. You search on uh, Word, uh, WordPress.org, Moving WordPress to a new host, I think is its title. Um, it will give you a step-by-step -step how to do it. And, if you, and also Moving WordPress to a different URL. So there are articles on this, and you can do it yourself. So the only advantage of using Backup Buddy is if you don't want to go through that, you know. Do, if you don't want to do it manually. It just makes it easier. So there are definitely articles on that. Okay. okay. I, 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 go ahead. Backup Buddy um, maintains the database separately. Does it maintain the post ID? Yes. Like does Backup Buddy maintain the post IDs and everything? Yes. It does a full, you know, SQL dump of your database and then it restores that. Yes. Do I have experience with Vault Press? I use that on two of the larger sites because their backups are about three gig each, and that was just too large to be uploaded. So two of my the sites that I maintain use Vault Press. It's good. It backs up instantaneously. It's expensive. I think it's. I think I'm paying for fifteen dollars or forty dollars a month, um, and it doesn't back up everything. So that if you have other folders in, in your, your website, website that are not you know, WDNS content, content doesn't, doesn't grab, grab that. Okay, and it's, it's not, not configurable until you get the, the enterprise, enterprise version, which uh, three hundred fifty dollars a month. No, are there any inconsistencies when you move a database from the local host up to the web? Right. Not with the post content, not with the user IDs, but with the URLs. Because when you're when you're post when you're publishing something, even on a local host, and it saves the URL HTTP localhost slash, and when you upload images and you embed images into a post, it's got your full URL in it. So you either have to Go in the database and change it, which is probably the best way. Or what? Or you can actually, the Codex article on changing the URL will give you two, two lines to put in your WP config that will then address that the URL has changed. You could I do like a find and replace if I have like a text editor? Would that work also? It's a database. You actually do do a replace command, right. but you're in doing a SQL command. You're basically doing a, uh, in MySQL, you're basically saying, find this URL and replace it with that. And the codex has the syntax. I haven't memorized it, but you can do it. it just, most people don't want to go in their database and tell it to alter things. So. But doesn't Dreamweaver, if you put the files to the remote host, automatically change all the URL? Yes. Um, Dream, does Dreamweaver change all the URLs? Update all the URLs and you can say yes, it goes through all your files and that's it. Okay. Dreamweaver or Dream Okay, does Dreamweaver automatically change the URLs? I haven't used it in a long time, but when publishing a static site, it sure did. But with Dreamweaver, you're not going to be publishing a WordPress site. Okay, I haven't done a WordPress site. Okay. Because that. that's that's the problem there. Okay. WordPress, the problem is is that your URL, your site URL, is going to be there. So yeah, load down. Not changing your own, well, go up, all the way to the top. I don't like to relocate. And go into, so right here, this is the simple, easy one. You can, you can do a replace command that they talk about. You can go edit the database. Um, but this command in the WP config, this has worked for me for everything except the multi-site. Multi-site's another animal, and we'd be here a lot longer talking about that. These two lines in your WP config, changing your URL, changing the home and the site URL, it will then override that. If you ever notice under the settings general, 
in WordPress it shows you your site URL and the um, home. You then can't change that if this is in your WP config. But then all the links that you have are now fixed. So it's a, that's the that's the one that I use for all the development site. If I copy something to my local machine to try something out on, I just slap that in the WP config to point to a new URL. So that's what I do. Any other questions? Do you have a local site to play, play, play with this? Um, 